Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twit Photo, episode number 42 with Catherine Hall and Leah Laporte. Recorded on January 31st, 2012. David Bergman. Twit Photo is brought to you by Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies on your PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or TV instantly. All stream directly to you, saving you time, money, and hassle. For your free 30-day trial, go to netflix.com slash twit. It's time for Twit Photo. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Uh, we're here once again, gathered together to talk to some great photographer, take a look at uh, their art, uh, talk to them about their inspiration, their technology, their technique. It's really a fun show, and I, I have to credit Catherine Hall for really making it the show it is because she presents Thanks, such great people and is a great photographer herself. Thank you. CatherineHall.net if you want to visit her blog and website and find out what uh, what she's up to. That's right. We might be going to Norway. In, uh, we, I April. hope we're going to Norway. So there's uh, Mikkel Mikkel, Holland. Look, We've had him work on the your show. Magic. One of my favorite photographers. He introduced us, actually. Yes, he did. Uh, because we went both went to Tasmania. And I tell him I'm forever indebted. Oh, I was. I should say the same thing to him, actually. <laughs> and he's a great friend. I love Mikkel. He's a really deep, spiritual yeah, he's man. a great, a great photographer himself. He brought 20 photographers to Australia to take pictures of Tassie. That's where we met. And uh, he also is a Norwegian and uh, has a family estate in Norway. And uh, I guess there's a Norwegian photo festival every year called Nordic Light. And he's trying to get Twit Photo to go to Nordic Light, which would be wonderful. Which would be amazing. So stay tuned. We'll, we'll have details on that. Yes. But what we were thinking, and it would be kind of interesting, is going and bringing our 5Ds and shooting all the video on 5Ds. I think we should do it. It could look gorgeous, right? Yes, I think it would look gorgeous. It would be a great experiment. I'll need anyway. some help. <laughs> uh, your photo of the week, um, a portrait of Wolfie. Wolfie! Yes. Yes, so this is from the Novogratz family that, that I photographed in New York. You spent how long with them? Three days. In their house, living, living with, with them. Living with them, yes. So it's quite an experience. Um, and he, the son, was a basketball player. That's his life. And so I figured doing portraits of him, incorporating the sport, would be a good reflection of him in that time period. So my tip has to do with sports photography, and it's about lighting. And just the importance of having dramatic lighting when doing shots of athletes. Because part of the, being an athlete is the muscles and the shape and the form. Exactly. And really showing the off the curves and definition yeah. and drama. Right. So Now, you can't light in the... If you're, if you're at a game, you can't control the lighting. But at least in the studio, you can. In the studio, you can. You can. Right. And it's interesting, too, because we did the shot. Um, and I, we had three lights set up. And... We just we tried all these variations, and we scrapped it down to one light, and that's the one that we ended up liking. Isn't it often the case that the single, yeah. for, for portraiture anyway, that the single light, light is sometimes, sometimes the best? Sometimes the best. Yeah. So, yeah. anyhow. Very nice. You gotta love the Rembrandt. Wolfie is a very <laughs> lucky fellow. That whole family is lucky. Those images are it's great. a handsome guy, right? Yeah. <laughs> How old is he? He's like 16. I don't know. I should, probably shouldn't say yeah. it on air, but I yeah. think he's like 15 or 15. something. Great yeah. looking kid. So. so that's CatherineHall.net if you want to know more. Now, who is on the show today, Catherine? Well, let's see. He has photographed six presidents. In fact, he just... He's been on 11 people. covers of Sports Illustrated. Wow. One of which was the Super Bowl issue. And he's the personal favorite photographer of Bon Jovi. So I'm just wondering, David Bergman, what is it that you don't do? <laughs> what is it that I don't do? I don't do fashion. Okay. Uh, I don't do weddings. Okay. Uh, but this no, is not I, a literal question. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's see. I'll go through the list. <laughs> no, uh, thanks for having me, guys. I'm really happy Welcome. to be here. Welcome. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks Thank for you. coming up. And, uh, so many of our photographers are on Skype because they're all over. Yeah. You're based in New York City. I am. But you happen to be on the West Coast. Yep, I was in L.A. this week, and I just wanted to come see the big operation here and meet you guys and hang yeah. out. So, so, so he came all the way in person. And yeah, before... Thanks. I don't want to forget to credit Steve Simon. Steve Simon, our good buddy. Who is the one that introduced us. Yep. And we went through his book and an episode in the past. I forget which number it was, but you can check it out in the archive. And there was a great review on his book, which is absolutely amazing. Um, 
Leo's going to pull that up, and we'll also have that in the show notes. So I would highly encourage this book. It's really, really digestible. Steve, it's well written. Steve's a great guy and a great photographer. And yeah, this book for every photographer, they Good, should have it on their bookshelf. It's, exactly, it's amazing. Good soul. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. He's an old soul. That guy. He's Do an go old back soul. and watch yeah. the show. Yeah. It's really a fun. It was show an together. amazing yeah. show. Yeah. yeah, great inspiration. Um, You've had a lot of my friends on this show. You've had Zach Harris and Vince LaFerre yeah. and a bunch of guys that I know. So. We like the same peeps. Yeah, well, exactly. I noticed that the elite photographer. Photography uh, cadre all know each other. Seem to all know each other, right? And yeah. We're, we're speaking to the top in the business, really. And it, it is interesting how coll- we've talked about this before. How collegial photographers can be, even though it's a solo occupation, and you'd think you'd be in competition with another. It's not. You're yeah. very, fr- you're very friendly, and so uh, we find this. Everybody kind of knows everybody else. I would hope. I mean, I, I don't. Every photographer's not like this, but I, but the good ones, I hope. Uh, are willing to share information and willing to be open. I mean, I, my, you know, I'm pretty open and, and I get questions all the time via email and I'm, I'm always That's happy great. to answer questions. And, Thank uh, you. But I do find some photographers hoard information they don't like to share and I don't, and then you don't hear from them much longer. So. You don't yeah, see them on our away. show. Yeah. There's yeah. no exactly. room for that in this exactly. era. Isn't that exactly. interesting? Yeah, yeah. It's an old, the old way of doing it is no longer well, acceptable. Yeah, in the old days, we couldn't share information. You had to go to ASMP meetings or something I like know. that to get anything and that was once every, you know, once a month if you were lucky and exactly. now you can just look up anything online. So I'm it's, insanely it's jealous because after this, you're going to Indianapolis. I am. That's not what's making me jealous. <laughs> <laughs> you're a big fan of Indianapolis? I've been in Indianapolis. I like it, but <laughs> I'm not sure. Indianapolis. Nothing Nothing wrong with it, but there does seem to be a big game going on. There's an event going on this week. Yes, I'm flying in from. I'm back to LA tonight, and then uh, I fly to Indy on Saturday afternoon. On assignment from Sports Illustrated. Sports Illustrated. I'll be covering the Super Bowl, which is on Sunday, of course. Go Giants! Um, And uh, uh, and then yeah. But by the way, do they pick a New England uh, photographer as well? (laughs) Yeah, you you know, with Sports Illustrated, we actually have a normal game. We might have two photographers at a game. The Super Bowl, I think we have twelve guys covering the game. So it's it's quite an operation. Do you guys get together and say you take this, you take that? I don't get the choice, but our editors do that. Yeah, we're we're kind of assigned. assignment. Do you know? Yeah, I do. Uh, What we'll what we'll have is either four or six photographers. I think we have two or four on the sidelines, roaming up and down. It's hard to roam at the Super Bowl because there's so many photographers there. Uh, and then we have four corners. Literally, it's a seat. The first seat in the first row in the four corners where we'll put photographers. And I'm in one of those seats in one of those corners. So oh. it's, it's actually likes great. You. I just sit there. I can order drinks, you know, during the game. <laughs> Not quite. But now, uh, what do you, you're going to get end zone shots there. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, I would, I, a lot of times I shoot in the end zone, even if I'm on, on the field level. Because that's where the drama they're is. They're coming that direction. Yeah. yeah. You know? The only difference is that when they're going the other way, I don't have the choice to go around to the other side. The right. Super Bowl, believe it or not, it's a fun game to cover just because of the scope of the event. But it's really pretty easy from my perspective because I just sit there and if it comes to me, I've got to nail it. Right. That's all. Yeah. If I don't, there's 11 other people shooting it in, from every other angle. So that, that is a good point. You, yeah. you, you know, it's if really there's easy. that. Well, you say that. <laughs> well, but, for you. But, but I'm thinking that great TD shot where the guy's in the air, he's just crossing the plane. If it happens in front of me, and I that's have you, it. absolutely, because my editor knows exactly where I'm sitting. You won't be and, sitting there again. <laughs> exactly. And after that play, he's going to come running over. We run cards constantly throughout the game because they're transmitting back to New York. You're where kidding. Edit. Oh yeah. So yeah, a runner editing. will come up to you and say, "David, give me your shot." Absolutely. I'll be handing him cards the whole time. Yeah. So what do you do to technically to prepare for something where you're going to have maybe one chance for a front cover? I mean, you might get the cover if you get that great yeah. TD. Like you yeah. did. Well, I did time. have a couple years ago, the New Orleans Super yeah. Bowl. I had that cover. But that was actually post-game. I had a, a pretty horrible game at that game because everything oh. went the other direction. All the touchdowns. There was a big interception late in the game. It was uh, Colts. Uh, Saints and the Colts were driving. They were down by seven. They were driving right at me, and I was like, "Finally, I'm going to get the you know the game tying touchdown." And three minutes left, and Peyton Manning's coming at me, and and I was so excited about it. And he threw an interception. It went the other direction, a hundred <laughs> yards, completely away from me. And I just sat there like, "Oh, you got to be so kidding you, you me!" You must have been depressed at this point. I was totally depressed. Yeah. And then after the game, they had the ceremony and the whole thing, and I'm you know 60, 70 yards away from the middle of the field, but I'm using big lenses. And uh, so I was able just to, from that position, I just shot the whole ceremony. And there was a moment when uh, Drew Brees picked up his kid and held him up oh. in the air and the confetti was uh, coming down. That was a beautiful And image. then the next afternoon, I still thought I had nothing. I didn't, you know, think it was anything at the time. And the next afternoon, I remember getting an email from my, my, uh, the director of photography at SI saying, oh, welcome to the club because I got a, you know, a Super Bowl cover. And I, I was like, what was the picture? I, I can't even <laughs> yeah. fathom what it was. I had a horrible game. And, uh, and yeah, it turned out to be that, that Drew Brees. And then they unveiled it that night on Letterman. They actually showed 
the cover. Oh, that's and, so cool. Yeah, it was fun. They had Breeze on the show. So is that kind of the dream? It's it was pretty fun. It was nice. It was nice. Dude, look at his smile. Does that not tell you? <laughs> <laughs> you say big lenses. Big lenses. Wait. Yeah. So like for example, I might use something like this, Leo. I don't know if you've seen this before, but I brought something to show you. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Where have you been hiding this that? Is, <laughs> <laughs> this is a Nikon 600 F4. Oh, my. Okay, F4, so it's very, it's wide for such a long lens, and that's why it's so big, Exactly. Right? That piece of glass. Look at the size the of that. Oh, my God. The glass is, of- you know, made to such exacting standards. And there are a number of pieces of glass in here, as you know, how yeah. lenses are made. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, th- from here on, it's just a hood. So the actual lens part stops about here. But it's Why do you still, have such a big hood for that? Uh, you know, you get a lot of flare problems with lenses like this. If, you, you know, if you're shooting into the sun... It's pretty easy for that sun to bend around into that easy. lens. Very yeah, because it's, it's such a big piece of glass. It's such a big piece of glass. And it makes it look better. <laughs> I was going to say, it's all about appearance. Which is really right? important. So, wow. yeah. How much get out of your way with how, that thing. How much does that this weigh? This thing's about... Oh, how much does it weigh? See? There you go. Oh my god. You're strong though. She's got a big muscle. Oh I yeah, don't know. did you hear that it went squeak squeak? <laughs> this is this is heavy. Yeah. That's why you got a monopod. Look at the camera's exactly. just like yeah. a little baby. Well, the monopod is not as much for the weight, although it certainly helps. It's also to keep it steady. Steady it. Because yeah. you can't when you're shooting at that distance, wow. you can't really hold it steady. Wow. I mean, do you even have a hard time with the monopod sometimes? No, you pretty much get used, get used to it. Is it about 30, 40 pounds? Something like that. I think I have a permanent indentation in my shoulder right away. Because if you spin it around and you put it over your shoulder, that's, that's how, how you carry it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Can I don't there like be a carry... woman doing this? Are there, there are any women, women out there? There are. There certainly are. But they're God. tough. That's, they're you got to be a tough I thought, that's how you carry I thought, it. I thought, I thought the, uh, the D3 was heavy. Exactly. How often is this on your camera during the game? The whole game. The whole game? Yeah, I use multiple bodies. And so lenses. you'll be sitting in the corner. I'll be sitting here with this and lens. It'll be with that. Exactly. Well, that and a couple others. I also use the 200 to 400 is my favorite mid range. With an lens. extender or just straight? Nope, just straight because I've got the six here. Right. And then probably a 70 to 200 and a 2470. So I've got everything from. You want to put that down so you're no, not. No, I, I think <laughs> I'm good here. You're I'm just just kind of starting to like nice it. Hey, wait, the show. wait. <laughs> um, that is a beautiful. But yeah, so I've got lens. everything from 24 to 600 at, because you don't know what's going to happen. Now, do you don't really. I mean, it's pretty brightly lit. Do you really need that fast? Lens. You do because you want to get the fastest shutter, shutter speed possible. Speed, yeah. What about so. tele- I mean, is it good for isolating too? At what depth? Do you like and to that shoot too? At? Absolutely wide open. Yeah. Always shoot wide open. Yeah. Right. So you you know yeah. If I was well, I couldn't shoot you from here, but if I was shooting maybe ten yards away, the background will be completely out of focus. And you want that? You want Absolutely. that picture yeah, of isolate. the guy going in and the and the act- sure uh, yeah sure. Now sometimes and then the other times you might shoot something super wide at the Super Bowl. You know, you have to do a wide shot showing the whole stadium and showing well, the Well, speaking of which, you're going to be doing a gigapan. Exactly. So that's, at the same that's time... That's about as wide as you can get. Exactly. <laughs> so at the same time as doing as shooting the game itself, I also... The magazine, they're so funny. They always say, oh, and can you do a gigapan too? Uh, yeah, sure, you can. Uh, you're the gigapan man. Now, can I'm you, the gigapan. Can giga you man. throw yes, in one of those? Yeah, exactly. Just throw so in a gigapan. tell us that don't know, what is a gigapan? So the gigapan. So uh, I went to a little event a few years ago uh, that was, you know, you might have heard of it. It was President Obama's inauguration. Yeah. And I was shooting my regular photos with regular cameras. And then at the, I knew I wanted to do some kind of panoramic to show the crowd. There's two million people there. So I knew it was going to be a big event. Uh, so beforehand, I actually contacted the Gigapan company. I, I, I was researching different ways to do big panoramics. I had never used it before in my life. And I took a Gigapan with me to the inauguration. And I just kind of set it up on the side. It was, you know, it was, to be fair, it was kind of an afterthought. And I shot regular photos and I ran the gigapan and that night after I transmitted all my photos back to the agency I went and I, I put the gigapan in and, and checked it out to see how it, how it worked and it worked really well what it is you know you can already manually shoot multiple images overlapping images and stitch them together in Photoshop or in any other program like that the gigapan unit is a, it's a robotic camera mount that actually automates the movement for you. So it moves the camera the exact same amount every time you can set like a 30% overlap or whatever you Whatever you want to set. So you set the parameters of the picture, the top right and the bottom bottom left, or top left, bottom right, and then let it run. And it just does its thing. It takes pictures all along a grid. And then in, in post, you use the GigaPen software, or you can use other software if you want, and stitch them together so you have one giant photo. So this shot, I mean, here's a close-up of the president giving his inaugural speech. If I... Zoom all the way <laughs> Keep going. Keep out. Going. Keep I going. can see that he was Keep quite going. far away. <laughs> and this was done with a point and shoot, right? It was. Yeah, at the time, they only had one gigapen model, and it only took point and shoots. It's a very small unit. 
Um, and this, this uh, photo, this is, imagine this. This is the epic. I'll just show it real quickly. This is the one you were using. And what kind of point and shoot were you using? Uh, at the time, I had a borrowed Canon G10. I'm oh, a Nikon shooter, and I had borrowed the G10. Because it could only, and... the, the, the original ones could only hold small cameras. Exactly. In fact, you were reminding me, because we've played with this a little bit, that it would push the button. <laughs> yeah, it has a little to, button to plunger. trigger. It has a little finger, yeah. a little plastic finger that actually pushes the button but down. But they now have them for DSLRs. Is that where you're going to use the epic? Yeah, so now since then, they've come Pro. out with two more models the epic Pro. Right. Right. We'll take big lenses. I actually put the uh, Nikon. We'll take that lens. Almost. I put the 200 oh, wow. to 400 in Did there. Did you really? Is what I use. That's what I use. So since the inauguration, I've done these at the Super Bowl, the World Series, the Final Four, NBA Finals. And it's amazing because it just looks like a panoramic photo. And then people who are there can zoom in and find themselves. And they have see yourself. Exactly. And they have Facebook tagging now, so you can tag oh, yourself. Yeah, that's interesting. And all your friends can go see it. It's, yeah. pretty, it's pretty cool. So something that started off as an experiment ended up being viewed 15 million times. 15 the, million hits I got on that thing. Yeah, yep. they interviewed and me on it's, CNN it's and it went crazy. New, and now it's a it's a whole new business guy. model for me. Another yeah. thing, exactly. That you do. <laughs> yeah, you know you can never stop coming up with something, right? But it should be something that's. Uh, does it have to be static? I guess it doesn't. Well, so that's the thing. The Gigabit had been around for a little while, but really it was developed by the NASA people for the Mars Rover program. Is, is where it came no from kidding. originally. You know, the, all those pictures of the surface of Mars that you yeah. can kind of zoom they in on the rocks. Oh, that's yeah, so neat. Yeah. It's exactly yeah. what it was. And then some really smart guys from Carnegie Mellon took it and developed it as a commercial product. And they, um, it had never really been used at a big event where there are people moving, which is where the challenge is, of course. Right. And I was kind of, I don't think I was the first person ever, but I, the first person to do it at a big public event like that. And it went crazy. The, the, the challenge, of course, is all in the post where... I've got to stitch it together. and I So go it doesn't in. come with software to do this? It does. There is Gigapan software. And the way I do it is I will use the Gigapan software first to do the basic stitch. And that, when I did the inauguration, it took overnight. I mean, I, I set it it's up and I went image. to sleep and then woke up and it was done. Now it takes about an hour. Oh, okay. And I've done it with 300, 400, 600 images. Full resolution, you know, Nikon D3 images. It's pretty amazing. It's pretty big. So if you look here is the Gigapan from the 2010 playoffs. Right. That's and not then, actually a zoomable version. But right. Yeah. But then there's the still from it. So you can see how much detail there is way down I in the know. middle of that. Yeah. And he, after, after, later in the show, he's actually going to show us inside in Photoshop the, gig, the inaugural one. So the Photoshop stitching uh, is... Well, what I'll do is I'll do the Gigapan stitch first yeah. to get it sort of close. Yeah. And then I actually go in in Photoshop and, and fix... Some of the things. You might have like double heads or so something like that. How long in total time? Just as you would with a panorama. Sometimes exactly. panoramas, you get ghosts. The problem is things. these images are obviously huge. So just opening the file in Photoshop could take 15 or 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's really cool. when you When I crop off the edges, like not resizing it, just cropping the black off around yeah. the edges, I hit return and, and you, you go have a cup of coffee and come yeah. back 10 minutes later. All right, go get a cup of coffee. I want to see how you do this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're going to get a little demo. Yeah. of uh, some of the software. And we have lots more to talk about with our guest because he's a great photographer in many other ways. I've got other great sports uh, action photos and so forth. Uh, this is this is a fun subject for anybody who loves photography. DavidBergman.net if you want to see more. In fact, his Gigapan image of the uh, inaugural is on DavidBergman.net. I was zooming in on it there. Yeah. But before we do that, may I mention our friends at Netflix? Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite movie, David? Do you ever have a time to go to the movies? You know what I've been watching on Netflix lately is uh, everybody told me I had to see it and I had never watched it. I've been watching Breaking Bad. It's awesome. Oh, my God. That's her. Yeah. I'm almost done. I'm almost <laughs> you like that, too? Leo got me into it. Yep. Great yeah. show. Well, really and then... So Sorry, they... I got a little excited. But it, <laughs> no, Leo got me into it. And it's funny. It's funny. I was like... Please tell me it's something I like. Oh, yeah. I think it is. It's, uh, really it's pretty good. dramatic. Really well done. But yeah. now I'm waiting for the next season. It takes so long. I think I have two more episodes, and then I don't know what yeah. I'm going to well, do. Yeah. Yeah, you plow through them, and then it's like... <laughs> they just finished, I think, done. their fifth season, but it's not yet mm -hmm. on Netflix. This is We're talking about Netflix streaming, which is the best single best deal in, uh, in entertainment at your house. $7.99 a month. And you can watch all... I mean... They have all of the first four seasons of Breaking Bad is a good example. Um, Friday Night Lights, everybody's been watching that in the Twitter. I like Friday Night Lights. Wonderful. It's really good. A show. The, the lighting Galactic. in that is actually really it's good. quite beautiful. For TV. We should find out how they're shooting that. Yeah, we should. Because that's a challenge, I think, to do those uh, night games, those yeah. high school night games, things like have that. Have you seen Friday Night Lights? I have not. Oh, you, you have got good. Oh, when you're so done after, with Breaking Bad. Yeah. <laughs> Do Friday Night Now, Night. of course, right. Mad Men, totally you know, Mad we all love Mad Men. You know, that's a great inspiration. Downton Abbey, the first season is on there. They just started the second season. Um, 
You guys are looking at me like I'm crazy. You don't know Dad. I don't Maddie? know that one. <laughs> no. Oh, <laughs> you got no baby. From the peanut gallery. Nice. Uh, you're going to love this one. Well, you got to go. Now, just remember, uh, I told you about it. Seven episodes right now on Netflix. Here's the deal. You can watch all this stuff for free right now by going to Netflix.com slash twit if you're not already What's the most member. embarrassing thing you watch on there, Leo? Oh, you know, if you just, uh, it, you know what? I'm pretty brave because I'm actually showing them my account, like what I recently watched. Yeah. <laughs> so, Galactica, um, great show. For some reason, Netflix thinks that my next favorite movie will be Here Come the Rubba Dubbas, <laughs> a group of toys that explore cool things in and around the bathtub. Oh, there you go. You're going to love that one. <laughs> I don't know what I watched to give them that right impression. <laughs> hey, what happens at your home is none of our business. <laughs> <laughs> um, but actually, the recommendations they make are, are, are quite good. Netflix has a very good recommendation engine, so you can... Uh, oh, there's always something to watch on Netflix. Documentaries, television shows, movies, and the streaming is really a great deal. So give it a try, Netflix.com slash twit. We've already got a bunch of shows you could start watching right now. You know what I watched last night, and I thought it was really weird, is Catfish. It's a story, of, uh, a mock documentary about a Facebook hoax. It's very weird. Oh, interesting. I'm not sure I'd recommend it, but, but it was very interesting. Anyway, the nice thing about Netflix is... <laughs> You know, normally if you if you if you do a DVD or you go to the movie store to get a movie or you go to the movie theater, you feel like you're kind of committed. Like, I got to watch this piece of crap the whole way through. Catfish, I said, you know, I'm done, <laughs> and and I go to the next one. It's like it's 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 channel surfing for movies. It's a whole new way to watch. Netflix.com slash. Okay, now we're going to switch over to your computer. Can we do that? Are we able to do that, Tony? David's computer? And you're going to show us... Yeah, just real quick. So this, this is looks like nothing, of course. Aperture running. I'm an Aperture, yes. So you're an Aperture guy. I'm an, ap okay. an Aperture guy, yes. I'm on the advisory board. Yes. Are you really? I am, yep. All and, right, because uh, we're Lightroom kids I here. know. Nothing wrong with that, but, you know, my... Well, we're also Canon shooters. You're a Nikon exactly. shooter. Exactly. You know, He's not it's, just a tool. Us, you know? it's just a tool. It's just it really a tool. It really is. I actually like Lightroom, and now that it's on the App Store, it's very affordable. Very easy to install. So I actually yeah. have Aperture on every computer as well. Okay. Well, you know, I... Show I, me some tricks. I actually prefer the Aperture raw conversions, which is really Do all you? that matters to me. That's the key. Absolutely. Okay. All I care about is the, the quality so of the conversions. So you prefer uh, uh, Apple's conversions to Adobe Camera Absolutely. Raw. Yes, I do. I'll have to try but it. If it works for you, no, there's nothing no, no. wrong with that. I'm no, not. This is what we're... I'm not elitist that way. I don't care. You're the pro. <laughs> I'm just. I'm listening and absorbing. So, just real quick, the when I this these are the actual images from the inauguration photo. So, what I was doing is I was starting at the top left and working my way down. Okay. Now, this was the first Gigaman I had ever shot. So, there are definitely some things in here I can do differently now. But for example, I was using the G10. It was autofocus, which you're not supposed Oy. to use autofocus. But I knew I was shooting a wide area. So that was okay. And I. You know, I wouldn't be able to control it while it was going. But normally it's true of a panorama, and I would guess it's true of Gigapan. You do everything in manual. You set yes. the exposure and exposure the focus. Exposure I had set. I had yeah. set the exposure manually. Now, I was also shooting backlit, so it's not, as a photo, it's not a great image. The sky is blown out. There's right. nothing in the sky. This first frame is actually the sky. It's more a tech of technical interest. That's, that's a that's, frame. That's a frame, yeah. So <laughs> as I, I went something down, went wrong. Oh, as there I went go. down there, you can see There's a little capital. bit. Okay. And literally, the, the, the Gigapen unit was just moving and shooting pictures. Now, for example, the problem with autofocus is here. Oops. It's going to focus on the lens. Yeah. yeah. Now, when I shoot these now at the Super Bowl or anything like that, I actually don't do auto anything. I manually trigger the button on every frame. No. I don't even let it shoot because I want to look at every Check. single frame. If I, have, if I shoot 600 frames and it takes me an hour and I have one frame that's not focused properly, it's I can't ruined. use it. The whole thing's yeah. ruined. So I look at every single frame and, and I have a shutter release on a cable. And I hit the button. So that's nice. So the Gigapan does allow you to do that. It'll wait till you shoot and you then go to the next position. Manually or auto. Absolutely. Uh, so you're going to do this before the game. No. Nope. They're the busy. Game. I am busy. I, like I said, I have, yeah. a, I have a great assistant. I have Josh is watching. Hey, buddy. Josh is uh, going to say, well, quick, quick, quick. They're throwing the ball. Exactly. But you have time when they're at the other end of the field. You know, I have, like that. over the years, I've developed some techniques to do this. It is challenging at a, at a game because you don't want to have the player, any particular player in five places on the field, which yeah, would easily happen. Yeah. So, you know, I've developed some techniques to kind of deal with that. But this is the first one I did, and that's how it happened. And so that's the first <laughs> row. So you actually cut that out. You cropped that out of the picture. I think it's in there, actually. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, wow. It's all the way on the edge. But then this is the second row. So this particular image was t uh, 11 down, I believe, by 20 across. So this was just doing its thing. This one I wasn't controlling manually because I was busy, <laughs> and I didn't yes. have an assistant with me doing this. So 
it's funny because people get confused. Now, so you were still shooting the inaugural as well as a gigapan? Exactly. While this was going on, I had this okay, clamp right. to the railing. I actually have a picture of it that oh somebody sent me. And you've like, got a really long lens because you're kind of far away. Yeah. Years later, somebody actually sent me this these pictures that a they took of you? that I had no idea. There it is. This is what it looked like. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, nice. I'm surprised the Secret Service didn't tackle you and throw you <laughs> exactly. I, I had concerns, but yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I had to go through three checkpoints with all this gear, and I had big lenses and everything, but I had credentials, obviously. Right. So, um, but yeah, that's exactly what it looked like when I did it. Which I was happy to have these because I didn't. I never took pictures of my own setup. So. Now, what is the V, the arm that's coming down? That's that? my clamp. It's just a. It's a magic arm, Bogan magic arm with a clamp on it. Bogan magic arm. I didn't have a tripod. There was no room. You can't see, but this yeah, this it's, it's press tight. area was packed. Yeah. So I clamped it. I'm not even standing right behind it. Somebody. I had to put it in front of another photographer and oh, ask them nicely to not touch it. And by the way, <laughs> you're right. All of those uh, the lens and the post that's all in the image but i kind of like it yeah it kind of gets a I scene like set it up you know, in it hindsight is. in hindsight i wouldn't have done it that way right. but uh but i didn't it's real so people get confused though when they see the photo they say wow it must be some super crazy camera that you have that's high resolution but all i'm doing is shooting regular photos right, right? Every, in any one of these images is just the that whatever, camera is 10, zoomed in 10 megapixels or whatever and it's yeah. zoomed in all the way that's the key right. it's just zooming in all the way and that's why you use a long lens because exactly. you want the most information exactly. about what you're taking. Exactly. So this is, for example, one frame. If you zoom in on it, just a regular, you know, this is looking at it at 100%. That's a that's, that's a regular frame by itself. Right. Right. So you have, when you stitch them together, you have that same resolution, obviously. It just, when you go from super wide right. to this tight, it looks crazy. So that's all it was. It just, this just did its thing, went down and down the road. So you go through all 600 frames. And then and you make do this. Oh, my, oh my God. Oh, my gosh. How do you do that? And, and that's what, the Gigapen software. Why did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the Gigapen software. So there is a little overlap. That's interesting. Thirty. Per, well, you can set it to whatever you want. Yeah. I have mine set to thirty percent. Thirty percent. So which that's for better stitching. Well. They get exactly. Okay. Now with people moving, it's tough. Somebody did uh, contact me, and uh, she's in the photo twice, which is because she moved. She found seats. herself. She moved seats, and oh, so she was walking in one picture, and then she was sitting in the other uh, picture. These. But, I mean, imagine if we had these of uh, the signing of the Declaration of Independence or Washington's inaugural. Speech. These things are historic oh, documents. Yeah, photographically, this picture is really nothing it's I'm history. that proud of. It's but history. for a document of history, I mean, just to see what people were wearing. And there's so many celebrities here and every politician. There are a bunch of presidents in the photo. That's so, so Congress. Yeah. Everybody was there. I mean, it was the event. So. so you go through the Gigapan software and then does it export in a way that you can then import it? You can export as a TIFF if you want. If it's under, I think it's four gigs is the TIFF uh, um, okay. top. Right. But That's you the can file also, system is exactly, actually limiting. Exactly, yeah. and, I, and I hit that all the time. So the other format, there's a raw, an, an, a format I had never even heard of, a Photoshop raw, some kind of raw, not a camera raw. Not DNG, something no, else. No, it's, it's, it's a, you know, a fo some kind of weird Photoshop format right. that I had never heard of. Right. Huh. And you can save it out, but you have to, when you, when you open it in Photoshop, you have to tell it, like, the pixel dimensions. Like, it has no information about right. the file. Right. So there's all kinds of weird things, but... The Gigman software will help you when you export it. It says, you know, so how to do it. So it's doing the stitch. You're using Photoshop only to clean up. Exactly. I do the initial stitch there because it would just take me right. days no, to do it manually. Not, There's yeah. no way. This is only 220 images. I've done them with 625 images, 650 images. And forget it. That would take all, you know, three days to do. And my, unfortunately, most of my clients that I do these for, my deadline is usually the next morning. Oh, the geez. World, the World Series, I did this past, the past two years, I did almost every playoff game. I, we did every playoff city that I could get to, that I could physically get to during the baseball playoffs. Baseball. So jealous. I'm talking I'm about baseball so playoffs. jealous. <laughs> and then every game of the World Series. Oh, I'm so jealous. <laughs> you have the dream job. Were you a kid? Were you a sports buff? Is that how You know what? I, believe it or not, not really. Oh, not a big you. sports fan. I was more of a music geek. <laughs> you were, oh, so there's yeah. the Bon Jovi. Connection. Exactly. Got it, got it. Exactly. But you've become a sports fan. Of course. I mean, I love it when it's a... You know, it's a great story, and the underdog comes back and wins the game. And I'm a University of Miami guy, so I like watching them. But other than that, uh, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's <laughs> almost as if they staged a drama just for your camera. You know, it's like you're you're like, okay, we're going to have the whole gamut of the human emotions. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And drama, and it's, it's going to be right there. It's all right. It's in all in this one box. Area. Exactly. exactly. And you get to shoot. It's it's great. It's it's yeah. It's easy. No problem. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so you weren't into photography as a child, though. So you go to Miami and you walk in. What possessed you to walk into the newspaper, and how did that change your life? Yeah, so I walked into the school newspaper one day just on a whim. I had a camera. I didn't really know how to use it. I didn't know an aperture or shutter speed or anything. And I walked into the radio station and the newspaper the same day. See, that was my mistake. I just walked into the radio station. <laughs> you got you to check both. <laughs> could, yeah. could, could have been going to the ball game. We, we'd be sitting in different chairs right now. <laughs> 
But yeah, I, I I never went back to the radio station. I followed up with the newspaper and the editor there, my my still my good buddy Mike Roy. He gave me an assignment on that first day, and you know it took off from there. And I became the assistant photo editor, the photo editor, the yearbook editor, all that stuff. Do you think so. then that it must mean that you had some innate ability at this? I guess people, you know, I do some workshops and teaching now, and I uh, I, I think about it a lot, and I, I think you can teach the technical very easily. The other side of it's a bit harder. Same thing with music. Mm-hmm. I know plenty of technical musicians who can do amazing things, but you, it has to come from somewhere inside of you also. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if I can even articulate it properly, but but there is definitely – you have to have an eye in photography. You, you can't gotta, develop your eye. You can make it better. You, can you absolutely better, can make it but better. You, but if you don't have it to begin with. But I think there's got to be some – maybe this isn't the political correct thing to say, but I think there's got to be some level of – just instinctive visual ability that's that's got to be yeah. there but at the same time there are plenty of things you can still do otherwise i mean i'm not i don't have some magic power that that other people can't figure out um but it's just it's it's interesting because i think it's definitely i consider myself half technical and half creative by the way my son plays lacrosse and i have taken probably four thousand lacrosse pictures <laughs> And not one even close to that. But lacrosse <laughs> does lend itself to some exciting stuff. It does. Lacrosse is great. I don't get to shoot it very often because the magazine doesn't it's, it's really not cover a major it. Sport. Maybe once a year I'll get an assignment to do it, which makes it that much more, much harder to cover because I don't get to cover it very often. The more you do it, I think the better you get. It's also yeah. a challenge because their helmets really obscure their faces. Yeah, you don't see faces as much. In Football's some of these getting to be more like that. Right. It used to be a football was just a little grid in front of you and now it's like a whole yeah. mask in front of you. Exactly. This picture actually was, I, I'm proud of because it was very difficult to make. He was coming around the net and if you just lay on the autofocus button, that net will be in focus. You can see it in the right hand side yeah. there. Yeah. That net will be in focus and then he pops out. Because you're panning across the net. I'm following the net. him the whole way. He's running from behind the net and then he just popped out at the last second and made that shot. So I shoot often with a combination of manual and autofocus. And that's exactly what I had to do here because as soon as he pops out, I've got to be able to turn that focus dial and nail him. It's perfect. Yeah, I mean, this was... I am blown away. It's still that my best lacrosse picture very ever. hard to do. <laughs> it was years ago, and I, I it doesn't get, you know, I haven't made anything better than that. Murder. So I'll take so it. So you manually got that perfect that focus. One, yeah. I cannot believe you manually got that. Because when he's behind that. the net, you know, you can't focus through the net either. You can't autofocus through and the net. And there's significant depth of field here. This, isn't, this was not an easy, easy. shot. Yeah, it's F4 probably. Good yeah. Lord. I love even just seeing the grass underneath. Look him. at the dirt flying yeah. up. So yeah, it's yeah, a little a tight. That's the that's pretty much full frame. I wish I had a little bit more around it, but uh, that's oh. full yeah, frame. you should have gone that. You I know, know, while you're doing the manual focus. Darn thing. it! That's the other thing about lacrosse. You always want to get the ball in, but that thing mo- that thing's moving 100 miles an hour. It goes really fast. I would never want to be a goalie. No, <laughs> it's very difficult. Oh, look at these. Yeah, that's beautiful. This is just yeah, beautiful. So you're obviously a big gear guy. Can you, yeah, can you tell us about the amazing necklace that used to wear in the 90s? What? <laughs> the awesome necklace you wore in the 90s. Catherine does this every show. She comes with a question that our guests every time go, what? What? I like How did you know about What are you talking about? <laughs> when you first started shooting digital. You would wear a necklace. Hard drive? Oh, that hard necklace. Hard drive. <laughs> yes. <Yeah>, so <laughs> thank you for the, for the tip there. What? Um, <laughs> it's like, I didn't usually wear necklaces. What? No, in the early digital days, I was a bit of an early adopter, and I was a staff photographer at the Miami Herald at the time. I was a newspaper guy. That's my right. my background. And we got some uh, – I was able to beta test some of the early digital cameras, and I remember one. It was a Nikon body. I can't remember the model number, but it literally was tethered to a hard drive that you had to wear over your shoulder. A giant – this was mid, <laughs> mid-90s. I'd love to know what the specs Could you were. It makes me think of those old cell phones that used to carry. <laughs> yeah, the brick cell phones. I had one of those too. Uh, I'm sure oh, that hard drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure that the uh, that hard drive was probably like five megs or something like that. <laughs> it was this massive, like like five dictionaries put together that you had to wear over your shoulder, and and the then the camera was literally just tethered to it by a cord. I'm sure it was a serial cable oh, or something like that. Again. I don't know what that sounded. Like. What the hits coming from? So this is is that Tom Brady getting clobbered? Yes, that was last year in the playoffs. You uh, are Jets or Giants or both. You know, I don't really care. You don't care. As long as it's <laughs> so, New York, As long as I get the care. picture, I don't care. That's a great I can't sack. That was when the when the Patriots lost last year in the playoffs. Now, is so that, that from your corner seat? No, that's nope, from the sidelines. That's not the Super Bowl. That was a playoff game, right. and that was the cover, actually, That uh, from that, uh, that picture. Amazing cover. Yeah, that was last season. And then that was just a couple weeks ago. That was Brady. That was that dive. When he dove over, yeah. That is such a brave dive. I, I was, mean, I'm stunned he got that he did that. In the back. But you know what? I will say this is that I... I 
call me crazy, but I, I kind of thought he might try to do it. He had two plays earlier. He had, he had tried to sneak in and was down. Right. And then they did a running play that didn't go anywhere. Right. And I'm on the side. I'm basically a yard, maybe a yard or two past the goal line. And I'm looking straight in. Now, we had four photographers there, so we're all around the whole you know, perimeter This is where there. knowing the game is so important. Absolutely. Yeah. That's why I say lacrosse, you know, I got, you get kind of lucky. But, uh, yeah, I kind of thought maybe he would do it. So I, I, I knew where our other photographers were, and I kind of knew the picture they would probably be making. So I went – I stayed where I was, and I went in a little bit tighter than I, than I may have normally done. And I just focused on Brady and watched him. You were and hoping he, he'd go over the top. And I did it, which, you know, now, it, it, you're it on, doesn't always happen that way. But You're on burst mode. Of course, yes. So you probably have a whole sequence. I of do, going but it was quick. So I, and you pick this one. Why this one? You know, there's probably only three frames of that happening, okay. and it's. I mean, it's obvious to me. It's just the moment. You know, he, the the one before he's a little bit lower. The one after he's Spending, a little yeah, farther down. Yeah. It's just the the peak of the action. That's and what he, you want. And, and I love how the ball is. Take is he's he's almost being pulled. It's kind forward. of poetic. It's beautiful. Yeah. yeah, it was really a nice play. Oh, it was a nice play. It was for the win, by the <laughs> yeah, way. Exactly, yeah, exactly, the so winning it was touchdown. A critical uh, play. And this was uh, opening day in Cincinnati. A few so years sometimes ago. you'll go in the back. You won't always you stay up to tell front. The story. I do like to show these sort of tableau sort yeah. of photos, and the magazine loves these. This so. is very patriotic. Yeah, yeah, I mean, who cares about you know the guy throwing out the opening pitch or something like that? I actually went up into the stands and took the wide angle. It's probably a 14 well, David, millimeter or something like that. You gave me a photo, which I'm going to treasure for the rest of my life, <laughs> of the guy throwing out the opening pitch. Well, that was a little bit different. <laughs> at, a, at a Chicago White Sox uh, <laughs> game. That is an amazing picture of President Obama. Yeah, that was when, um, because of my inauguration photo, I actually, the president, I did hear through his people that he did see it, which I thought was pretty cool. Oh, interesting. And I made some good connections at the White House, and I, I had contact with them. I knew the president was throwing out the opening pitch the next year at the All-Star game, <laughs> so I and uh, was able to actually stay with the president for pro- about a good hour and a half. Wow. While he wandered around, he met the officials. And, you know, I've worked with some great people, but that was pretty cool. I just, don't have that in my, uh, unfortunately, not my that slide show. No, but um, it's actually a, a, a frame from that day but, uh, that you'll get to. We'll do in the tips, actually. Oh, there you go. But, yeah, it was a blast just, just hanging, you know, down there with him. And I wore the suit and the whole thing and, you know, there had you to go. look all official. And, you know, I wear a suit about once a year if I'm... So if it's I'm an amazing looking. picture. I, uh, Thanks. Because he's meditating. He's thinking. He just, but speaking of amazing pictures, let's take a look at some more of these because these are... Inc- look at that dunk. Holy camoly. That's yeah, that a, was uh, Midnight Madness at UConn. UConn, yeah. Yeah. Drew Carey? Drew Carey, yep. What he's the hell? The <laughs> <laughs> That's the side of him you don't usually see. Yeah, he's uh, he's great. I've actually done some work with him over the years. I've gotten to know him pretty well, and I consider him a friend Look now. Look at this of Drew Carey. And I did some... I did it. <laughs> yeah, I did it. And the great Proops is there, too. Are these all comics here? Yep, that was the... I went on tour with them. They have an improv all-star oh, improv. event. And uh, yeah, Greg Proops and Kathy Kinney and the whole gang there. So That's that was so great. a blast. So we were, they were playing at, at a casino in Vegas. I think it was the Luxor at the time. And it, I wasn't hired to do portraits. I was just covering the events. But I said to them, hey, we should go do a portrait. So the next day, Drew's like, yeah, sure, whatever. So the next day, we cordoned off a part of the casino, and security had the whole thing. And I had all my lights set up. And it was a blast because tourists were walking by like, uh, what is fun. going on there? You have an intri- There's something going on in this picture. I, I, I can't quite put the, my it's, finger you know, on it's it. It's a slow shutter. Spe- it's a slow shutter. I'm dragging the shutter a little bit. You're talking about in the upper right there? There's well, that. not just that. The whole quality. But, yes, I can see the, the shutter it's dragging. It's toned a little bit. I, I, I think it's, it's uh, soft. It's beautiful. I think it's the shutter that you're seeing. Yeah, it's really interesting. Did you teach him photography, right? I did. Yeah, Drew is one of my uh, one of my photo uh, uh, students. Oh, that's neat. He actually is really interested is he in photography. Good? He's very good. He actually loves shooting soccer. Oh, And really? so he went out and bought a bunch of this gear, and I took him to a, a, a couple of games, and we worked on it. And he's actually really, really good. He had he before he got the Price is Right gig, he had images published and under a fake name. Oh, wow. He didn't want to get published just because he's good Drew Carey. Him. It was a fake name. Nobody knew, and they they got published. He had one in Sports Illustrated once. He was oh, yeah, that's that. so cool. He, yeah, he did. Right, By the way, I have the Obama photo up on my screen. If oh, you good. Want to we can show. show uh, can we show his? There it is. Oh, there's that oh yeah, that I am amazing. so grateful for that print. That Thanks. is unbelievable. Yeah, that was he just as they were announcing his name to go out on the field because he was going to be throwing out the pitch. He just was standing in the tunnel and he just kind of took a moment. It happened really fast. I only have one frame where his eyes are closed. Now, did you know when you got this? Were you like that's that's the, money? Uh, this one, I wasn't sure. I mean, I. It was a nice scene where he, when he was standing there, but the, the his honestly his eyes were closed for so 
so quickly for such a short period of time that I didn't really know till later. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Here's a quiz for Catherine. See her sports knowledge here. Uh-oh. Who is, uh-huh. who oh, is well, this I, a picture? Can I just say fail? Who is that a picture of? Oh, come on. Ryan, do you know who that is? It's obviously Don King, right? Who else could it be? Look at that hair. Isn't oh, I should have looked at the chat room. I could have cheated. <laughs> <laughs> the chat room knew. Chat notes. Chat room knew. I love it that you turn him around. Yeah, well, you know, he shooting him was interesting because he has this public face right. that he puts up. for. Right. Every, he must do it for every photo. Right. And it's just that big smile, and he's right. got the flags, and everybody knows that picture. Right. And I was shooting him for Sports Illustrated. And every time I would pick up the camera, we had, you know, a good hour together in this private room. and He there was turns on the mask. As soon as I put the camera on, he puts it up. Yep. And that's my job as a photographer to get past that yep. and get through that. And I worked it. I was working it really hard. I had, I brought in, you know, a young, beautiful assistant. And I had all kinds, you know, and we were chatting with that. I put the camera down and we'd talk. And he was normal and fine. And as soon as I pick up the camera, boom. Yeah. Uh. So I was like, oh, man. So, so I was like, okay, let me get a profile. And I just kind of turned him a little bit to the right. Turn, oh, keep going, keep going. And I mean, he had to know what I was doing. I was like, all right. That's My favorite kind of image is when you can tell who it is. Most people can tell who it is yeah, without, see- without seeing the face. That's, that's always kind of cool. When you yeah, you can tell this one. Yeah. Boy, that's Most great. people. All right, so this right. is a band. So we were saying, so this band is... Uh, <clears throat> that was all-time low. All-time high. All-time high. <laughs> yeah, so you exactly. get them to jump. That should have been the caption. All-time like high for all-time Yep, low. this was in a hallway before the gig. And you know, just I, I, I used a bunch of speed lights, Nikon speed lights. And I love Gels? this because... Gels, yep. All that light is mine. All the all the color, I'm creating that. The hallway does not look like that. It's normally. not blue. So using blue and anything else? Uh, gosh, I don't remember. I'm sure I've got that, you know, that orange on, that on the side. The side, yeah. And, yeah, and yeah. I, so you, I'm guessing you did it before the show because you want to capture the energy that they have going into a show. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times I don't have a choice. You know, I'm told right. I get them at this that time. Right. Uh, and after the show, they usually don't want to do a photo shoot. They're down. So they're man. tired. <laughs> These guys, I wish I could remember their name, but I love this because... I this is I, I I basically showed up and I said, Hey you guys mind if I uh Duck gaffer tape, tape you to a tree? <laughs> they said, Sure, no problem, why not? So we used about two rolls of tape just walking around that tree taping them up. But that's what I like about working with these young bands because they'll do anything. Sure. I can't do that with Bon Jovi. Sure. I mean, from the concept, are you coming up with these concepts a lot usually of times alone? I am. Or do you sometimes do it with a band? Depends on the magazine, but a lot of times sometimes the magazine will have an idea of what they want. Yeah. Because they're writing a particular story about something. But uh I want to tell you the story about these guys real quick because this guy, they're from Chicago and they, um, blanking on the name, but uh, they, one of the guys was in a horrible uh, accident. Well, not an accident. He was actually beaten by a guy. He tried oh, to save dear. a woman who was oh my God. being beat up by her boyfriend at the time or fiance. Oh and he jumped in to try to save her and he beat the living daylights out of this guy. And he was near death. This is now a year later. He survived. He's doing very, very well. And but he still has um, uh, what's the where everything's dizzy. Oh, um, vertigo. Vertigo. Oh. So you wanted to capture that. Oh, I so you we put him in a spinning tunnel just to see what would happen. Exactly. We went to the Navy Pier in Chicago, and we went in the fun house with no permits or anything. We just went in with one small camera and one flash. Wow. And we just did it, and it worked out really, really nice. It nicely. worked out great. Yeah. yeah, we couldn't have him in there for very long. Holy but, uh, cow. Yeah, these guys, their name is Behemoth. Yeah, they look like it. What I like about this picture, I did some normal pose photos, but this is when they were getting ready. So they oh, were kind of awesome. they were kind of primping themselves, which I thought was funny because they're demons from the yeah. underworld, but yet they we have to look just have right. to look just right. I would like that band. I think there's John Bon Jovi. Yeah, so this I is a batch of the hair. This is a batch of Jovi pictures. <laughs> this has been a dream gig for me. I, I came you're in, a fan, so you love music. Well, and, I mean, yeah, they've. I just came in uh, a couple angles. years ago. <laughs> and I now, at this point, have incredible access. John has been amazing. He, he, he lets me do whatever I want. Once I've an done. artist really trusts you, I'm sure you get... That's what it is. This yeah. job is only half about the photography. The photography got me in the door, but then beyond that, it's all about personality and trust. Yeah. And, and he... I mean, he could hire anybody in the world, right? right? And I don't, I don't think that says anything about my work, but it's just, for whatever reason, I came in at the right time, yeah. and, and he does trust me. I've been to events with him and his family and his kids, and... And he's just been amazing to work for. So Are you on a ladder? Shows, on no, this? I'm in the rafters in the arena. I went oh, all the yes. way up in the rafters for this. this is, I think in Toronto. And yeah, I can, during the show, we've traveled the world, and I could literally go anywhere. Oh, that's great. I could go on the roofs of the stadiums. I would set up remote cameras on the stage. I could shoot in his dressing room anywhere I wanted. This is actually a remote camera that I have on the drum kit. Is he out. gonna? Use, oh, he's throwing the maracas. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Is he looking for publicity shots, or you know, just... I actually started a company uh, to sell prints 
from the shows. Ah, so as a fan, you can buy prints. Yeah. Uh, tourphotographer.com. You can actually go on there and see the show you were at, at and buy prints. So that's kind of my my goal is to create a business now out of tour photography. Well, let's see because you gave Catherine a print. Yes. Oh, oh, so you gave me President this Obama. Is I'm <laughs> yeah. Let's see what you, let's see what you gave Catherine. <laughs> I'm so excited. It's good. This is a test, David. It's yeah. like a Rorschach test. I know, and I have to say. I would have thought it would be beautiful, but seeing it in real life wow. is there you go. amazing. Wow. You know what I've found is that, I mean, there's so many images on the Internet now, and they come and go so quickly. I think, I, I don't know, call me old school, but I think holding a print in your hand. Yeah. And Can you get mine? It's on the desk. It, framing like, it. it you, know, you frame it. You put it on your wall. Um, what did you print this on? The paper feels so... Yeah, so it's Red River paper, which I love. And that's the Aurora Natural, which I use all the time on my Epson printer. And uh, it's do a you, great... Do you, print, do you print all the ones that you people order yourself? No, 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 no. no. Okay. Now, what's interesting... I don't, I don't touch them. Is it traditionally... So special. Uh, yes, uh, special for you. Digital and inkjet doesn't go well for monochrome, but they've gotten really good, a lot better. very good. Oh, it's the Epson, gorgeous. Epson yeah. uh, 3880. 3880. Yep. Okay. That's, I have a 3880. Paper. I love it. It's I know. Great. And Red River paper. Now, here's... Somebody's going to get me my Obama. Right behind you. Right behind you. There it is. And it's, uh, tell us about this print. Same thing. Yeah. It's yeah, the same exact thing. It's, I like it's it. Just Matt. even looking I at love it, Matt. I think it feels more like a museum. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Like, glossy is so consumer now, like yeah. a one-hour lab feeling. Right. Yeah, me. exactly. And this, it, there's no, there are no reflections. You don't have to worry about ruining the image with a with a big light reflection. It's so get, cool seeing the crowd and seeing all the faces and everything. Yeah, that's the advantage I have with Bon Jovi is that I can shoot that's from so on stage looking out, so I can show you what they're seeing. Yeah. How how many camera remote cameras are you setting up typically? It, it varies. Uh, Sometimes there are logistical concerns if we're leaving the show quickly and I'm not going to be able to get the cameras down. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That happens, I there mean, are a lot of shows. has that almost happened where it you lose all something? The time. Well, in, in Europe, we just, over the summer, we finished in Europe. They, we did 17 countries in eight weeks, which was amazing. And literally, they would come off stage and walk right into a car and we would go. So I, I wasn't oh putting up goodness. remotes in Europe. Yeah, you yeah. Well, he, now, this looks like there's a strobe. Will he let you use strobes in there? No strobe. It's all, it's that's all stage, lighting. stage lighting. Yeah, that's the advantage of a big show like that. Yeah, because you have great lighting. lighting. Yeah. You don't have to do anything. Exactly. Oh, my God. Look at that. And that's in Helsinki. And this sets up because this was, it was pouring rain that night. And obviously, I'm getting soaked. Oh, but I'm used to dealing with so the rain amazing. at sporting events. And then he actually. Uh, Busted his knee at this show. He tore the meniscus in his left oh knee. Are you serious? And he did not leave the stage. He kept performing for another two hours. And then I think the next photo is it backstage oh right after gosh. the show. It hurts. And we, I just put this in my blog yesterday for the first time. We didn't release wow. these photos at the time. But he, they cleared everybody out. Everybody left. And we stayed after. And his doctor and his brother and me. And we were the only ones there. And he, to his credit, John wanted all this documented. I actually, when he had surgery, I was in the operating wow. room with him wow. as he was having this thing removed a couple weeks later. But he didn't cancel any shows. Tough wow. guy. Didn't cancel any shows. Played with a brace on his, on his leg and, uh, and then had it operated on and was like new. Let me afterwards. ask you about the uh, – what plug-in did you use for the monochrome? Uh, I use the, yeah, no, I use the Nick. Nick. Oh, no, you're a Nick guy too. Yeah, Silver me too. Effects. In we Aperture. I, I do it in Aperture. Yeah, they have a plug-in for exactly. both yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I love, yeah, for all my black and white, it's Nick Silver. I Pro. Nick. I love it just it. looks great. It looks I was like so film. happy when they came it out with it. It looks like just revolutionary yeah. when they came out with it. You can't do it any other way. It I haven't looks found any like other film. It's Ansel Adams. There's a grain quality to it. Yeah. There's, I don't know how they do it. And it's there's so many amazing. choices, too. You can yeah. play around with yeah. it. And... I found what I tried to do on the tour, just so I didn't drive myself crazy, I found sort of one yeah. look that I liked in all my behind-the-scenes photos. I use that same look, so there's a consistent. I like well, the can be choice consistent. here in this That's one of grain, though. Yeah. Well, yeah. So this was actually the grainy for two reasons. First of all, it's black and white, yeah. but also I'm pumped way up yeah. to 6400 or something like that ISO because yeah. this is in the car that's on your, the way back. That's your D3 right there, exactly. Man. And afterward, what what happened was we had police escort, and the light was flashing oh, on his wow. face. So I just laid back. Just I'm sitting shooting. across oh and I just yeah. shot like 100 frames yeah. and you get you one or right two one. with how, the I mean, how do you get here? So you were like a shy guy that wasn't even in <laughs> photography. Yeah. You go to college. You don't even know what you want to do. Right. And how do you get from there to Transition. Here? You know, I, I've always been a slow and steady wins the race guy. I mean, I've been doing this for over 20 years now. So I think every day, just one more step. And I always wanted to do a tour like the one I just did. I, I knew very clearly... Not necessarily, you know, Bon Jovi. Any big band that was playing for 100,000 people is what I wanted to do. I love doing that. I love yeah. that environment. And I've always been headed in that direction. And even doing the sports and doing at the newspaper and all the other stuff, I, I always had my eye on this. And I, I was 
plugging away constantly. And I've I've done other tours, smaller tours and big tours. And then when I got this tour, it was just it was just a dream. And and people have said, oh, did you ever imagine? Because I, I actually was flying with the band on their jet. Here I'm on the private jet with them every day and we were staying in these amazing hotels and the crew and everybody else is on the tour buses and all that and I don't know how I, you know I'm on the private jet looking around going this is ridiculous well, because he yeah. wants shots like that one that's exactly. why <laughs> exactly you don't get that shot on the bus yeah so uh, wow these are great yeah it's just amazing this is a, just a dream gig for where, me where is this uh, shot that's in uh, uh, Bucharest Romania Bucharest. that's Ceausescu's that's palace that's amazing isn't it that's his palace that's what it was <laughs> former palace <laughs> yeah. yeah it was built uh, during his regime but I don't think he ever lived in it I think they wow. executed him before he uh, got to live in it yeah. now it's a uh, uh, Congress or, you know, whatever, the, the Parliament or something like that. Is it gives there. you such perspective of what it would be like to be him, you know, yeah. going through to these... stand in front of that crowd. Yeah, and, and with this architecture. Well, that's why this is a nice combination of, of these shots where you're on stage and then the personal, very quiet, intimate yeah. moments. Uh, there are those moments that people don't get to see, and yeah. I, I feel like my job is to be the eyes of the world, I guess, Look to show, and I'm, you know... yeah. On this level, I'm not documenting war. Or this reminds like me of sports, though. It's the same thing. You've given this venue, this arena, to get these very dramatic pictures. Photographically, they're very similar. Yeah. People wonder about these two worlds I live in, you know, or the music world and the sports world. But the, but photographically, they're actually very, very similar. You deal with changing lighting conditions, unpredictable uh, events, but all within a contained area. So you kind of can anticipate what's going to happen, especially the more I shoot the band, I know their instincts. I know what right. John likes to do. I know when he might jump. Right. So yeah. I can put myself in position to do that. There's a guy in our chat room named Demigod who says, less Bon Jovi, more behemoth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use that. I like that <laughs> now, this one, you're po they're posing so for you. So this is the last show of the tour. Yeah. This was after a year and a half on the road. Wow. And I, during the day, I went to John at the hotel and I said, we got to do this picture. One I've never shot. asked him to do anything specific for a photo. Right. Uh, on stage, especially, because that's sacred, the stage. Yeah. It's, it's his stage. But uh, it was the last show. And I said, you know, it'd be great. if you Because I've made that picture from behind a hundred times. Yeah. With them facing out with their arms up and it's beautiful but it's the same thing every show so I said it'd be great if you guys could just turn around for a second so he didn't tell anybody the rest of the band he literally just did it and then pulled them over and said hey come here and I, I walked up on stage and I took the picture in about three seconds and then got my butt out of there but, that's uh, great and I love it that you turned him around and, yeah uh, I mean the way you can show the crowd and you yeah, can show the whole band it's it was cool having the rim light behind him too yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, know? you know I wish those things weren't quite there right where they are yeah but it still gives it it'd be better if there was nothing well you know it's on stage <laughs> yeah. there's right? speed lights there's speed lights <laughs> no ginormous are... speed lights yeah. so let's get some uh, tips from uh, our guest because this is uh, tips tips how do we be, how do we be like you? Be like me. David. You don't want to be, I like, want to be me. like David. You want to be like you. <laughs> so visualize. That's a good tip right there. <laughs> exactly. There you go. Be yourself. Tip number one. That's my visualize tip. the photo that you want to make. Yes. I think it's very important that, go, especially an event like this, where, you know, a concert or sporting event, the Tom Brady picture. In my mind, I knew what I wanted. Now, you don't know if it's actually going to happen that way, but I at least went in with a plan. Even if it was just three seconds earlier, I had an idea of what might happen, and I prepared for it. With Bon Jovi, I had the advantage of shooting them over and over, so I, I have a good There's feeling. There's a certain of kind of repetition to a exactly. concert. Exactly. Yeah. So I might think to myself, oh, it'd be great to make that picture. That picture you saw of John jumping with the blue sky, that was in Oslo, Norway, which I'm jealous you guys are maybe going out there. But uh, I loved it out beautiful. there. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's gorgeous. There, yeah. And it was quarter to midnight. It was 11.45 at night, wow. and it was the only time I've ever seen blue sky at right. 11.45 yeah. at night. It was in the summer. So the, the sun never really set. It was never really dark. So that was the first time. So I knew I wanted to make a picture of him jumping with blue sky in the background. I've only done it with black sky. So I purposely put myself in that position. Now I don't know if it's going to line up right and if everything's going to happen. But yeah. I think just in my mind having that image, more often than not, I find I'm able to make that picture. Yeah. And, and sometimes, sometimes I just feel like I'm willing it to happen. And it's just, you know, that Brady picture. I just I want it to happen so badly. And then sometimes it will. It Do you think happen. it's, I mean, is it a combination of visualization and instinct too? I mean, does the instinct kind of prompt that? Sure. I mean, I think they go hand, hand in hand. Instinct and experience. And, yeah. you know, I've seen it before. I, yeah. I kind of know how to deal with it. Um, but, I, but, I, but I think even with a portrait or anything, if you just go into it and say, yeah, let's just, you know, mess around, see what happens, a lot of times it doesn't work very well. I go in with a plan. Now, of course, you have to be flexible. Yes, of course. Because things change, and you might see something. If you see something great, don't shut yourself off to something else amazing. 
But going in with a plan, I think, is important. Know what you're looking yeah. for. Yeah, and, and visually, obviously. So actually picturing the image in your head. Mm. I do that all the time. Sometimes they call it pre-visualization. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Shoot details is the Details, yes. So I hope you have the photo. But I there's do. Uh, the next photo. Next one. Is a detail. There you go. So now I show that picture sometimes to people without saying what it is. And if you I look at the signature, it is, yeah. it's President Obama's right. hand. right. And he's, he signed a bunch of baseballs for the umpires. It's a great shot. People overlook these details all the time. And I think, for me, that picture I like almost more than the other one. Not quite, but almost more this than... This one's a great shot. <laughs> yeah, I mean... It's... But I know what you mean. And this one's more abstract and... Um, That's what I mean. I would hang yeah. this, you know, I would hang this on my wall first because you kind of look at it and you go, oh, it's a bunch of, bunch of baseballs on a guy's hand. And then when you look at it closely, you go... You see uh, the signature, yeah. Oh, that's, and I think it's almost cooler to like not show his face, and it's yeah. it's just because everybody Provoked anybody can thoughts. shoot that. You know, yeah. anybody who's shooting president would do that. Yeah, but how many people have a picture of the president well, with his yeah. eyes <laughs> closed, <laughs> pre-visualizing? Yeah, not many. But I think yeah. at any assignment with Bon Jovi, I would go during sound check, and I would just walk around and shoot pictures of guitar strings and microphones and just little things that I would yeah. see around the stage that people. Again, I feel like my job is to bring these things to the, to the fans, to Bon Jovi's fans. And they would never get to see John's, you know, the, the, the case that holds John's wireless microphone right. that says JBJ on it. Yeah. So well, I think it's fun to share that. That's the journalist instinct. It's the story. To you. You're yeah. the He's telling, you have yeah. the details, you have the micro, you have the macro. Exactly. You have all of so, it. I, so I just, you know, for anybody out there shooting, don't forget that stuff. I think yeah. it's important. Do you bring a macro? You don't bring a macro. No, I don't. Well, I, I mean, probably, yeah. You can shoot it. With the, the balls, like yeah. the close-up <laughs> balls. Yeah, exactly. there you go. Just back up with exactly. your, your But you do bring lights. Millimeter. You have lights with you, and this is uh, tip three is learn how to light a portrait. Absolutely. So I think to separate yourself from the pack, which I'm a big believer in doing, you know, the Gigapan, doing something different from what everybody else is. The Gigapan, there were 500 photographers there. I'm the only one that did that that picture. Everybody else just shot the event. You made your name. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So uh, this, I, I brought up this picture because this was a – an assignment, a job for a friend of mine who has a worked at a record label, and they hired me to shoot uh, concert stuff. They were filming actually some videos, and I was just documenting the whole scene. Well, I brought some lights with me, yeah. just on a whim. And when we were backstage, I said, "Hey, let me just do a portrait real quick." And I did this. Nobody, they didn't know who I was. These guys didn't care. It was no big deal. And I just did this picture. And then later, of course, I sent it in, and everybody loved That's it. And the, the picture. This band wound up using this picture for sure, a bunch of their promo did. material, yeah. and they hired me again. And yeah. it just turned. If I had just shot the event, you know, anybody could kind of do that. So you have put a light behind them, which yeah, I I've got a light in front of them and a light behind them. Yep, it's hidden by their legs there, but you can obviously see the shadow where that light's coming from. But I think learning how to use light is huge because I just I know so many. Really talented people who just say, oh, I'll just shoot available light. I'll take them outside. Mm. And anybody can learn to do that pretty easily. Yeah. That's not that hard to do with the cameras Well, and days. as the technology is improving and the ISOs are getting better <laughs> and the grain is getting less, yeah. less people are lighting. Exactly. Exactly. But, so. but you wouldn't get the, the amazing graphic results of the light rays exactly. without that light behind it. Maybe you were lucky the sun would be setting that time. And yeah, get, okay. No. Except this is indoors. It's, yeah. <laughs> no, you're not, you had to have a light. But it gives it. that feeling Which, of the light bring, coming underneath the door. Note to self, Norway, lights, bring lights. Yes. Okay. Bring lights. <laughs> yeah. you, and you put a, um, bring, yeah, the yeah, put bring the pro photos. Bring the pro photos. You must make sure it gets done. I'm just kidding. <laughs> did you put gel on the one to make it look like I it was did. the sun coming yeah, through, absolutely. kind of? Absolutely. So are you gelling yep. a lot? I do. Yeah, just because... What, what are your... What's your go-to gels, and where do you buy your gels? You know, I use those little teeny Roscoe gels, and Dave Hobby, actually, who's yeah. a friend of mine and who was on the show, uh, actually sells his little strobus pack, and I use those. They're little tiny ones because for speed lights. Oh, I gotta get you that. Just put on, oh, yeah, so Roscoe used to make... These kits, that you, they were sample kits. I'm sure you've seen them. Those big yeah. kits with every oh, color on them. The little yeah. tiny, little tiny. And they're samples so that, you know, for cinematographers, they can see what the light looks like. Well. They're big so, enough. Exactly. Photographers said, ooh, I'm using speed lights. It'll fit perfectly on right that. Right there. The only problem is there's a hole on each one of them because they're they're they bound know. together with oh, a spike. Oh, yeah. So the whole, so you always had to, like, tape over the hole or something. So <laughs> so they, they, dis, they either discontinued them or they stopped putting them out. And Dave Hobby, Mr. Strobus himself, very Smart wisely man. said, I'm going to sell these Smart as a pack man. and just the ones you need. And yeah, That's I only awesome. use maybe three or four different. It depends if I'm doing a, something with a specific color for an effect or balancing out light. Yeah, it makes such a huge difference. Huge, but but knowing how to where to put lights, yeah. how to modify lights, soft boxes, umbrellas, all that I'm kind of stuff. I'm putting you in charge of that in Norway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Yay. But yeah, that's I think learning how to light. If you're if you're really going to do this professionally, you need to know how to light. 
You just you can't rely is, on just it is working available. Well, photography, the thing is, photography, writing, <laughs> exactly. With light. No, but it's so but funny creating your own life because right. you're so scared. People are so scared of it, yeah. and then you use it, and it's like, yeah. The dyna- it was harder. It makes it so dynamic and so beautiful. I, I, and rich. I'm older than you are. It was harder when I started because oh we gosh, didn't have digital. So much harder. And and you didn't know. I didn't have digital either when I started. Well, you have you to know. shoot Polaroid. It did take or, me yeah. a, an hour to develop my first role, but you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, we're going to wrap up with your two favorite shots. Here's one of John Bon Jovi uh, in concert, of course. So yeah, I use this one because I picked this one. This was the first time I put a remote camera on the stage, and I had to convince them to let me do it. I mean, I was I just started with them. I'd only been with been with them a little bit, and they had they'd never seen a picture like this before, a still photo. And I said, just trust me. I do this with sports all the time. You know, let me try it. And uh, you know, putting something on the stage is is a big deal. And so this was literally the first time I did it. The first show oh, I put a remote wow. up there. And then of course I got this picture and made prints for everybody. Are and you putting a tripod on the no, stage? No, I usually or? use a super clamp. A like, super clamp on a ri- on the existing lighting that rig. exists. Well, lighting or in this case, it's probably on like a a, a video camera or stand okay. or a, or a you know it's part of the drum. I actually did it to the drum kit once, but uh, very and then, lightly. And then yeah. what kind of trick? Are you using? How are you? Pocket wizards. Pocket I use all wizards. pocket wizards. Yep, and I'll, I'll usually hang one around my neck, and so I can shoot. And then when when John turns around, I can just grab it so and cool. shoot away. Yeah. And this picture, just woo, so I you didn't know? know the stage was so sacred. So people that want to get into concert photography, you don't get on the stage. It's a John. big deal. Yeah, I mean John, especially you know that's his place, and they can be anywhere in the world, and the stage is exactly the same. It's their stage. It's the same dimensions. Right. Everything's you know on a tour. They'll occasionally play at other places. Yeah, but on their tour. It, it's all the same. That's interesting. So that really is their comfort zone. Absolutely. They know this area, and they don't want some guy crouched down there. Exactly. They know that area. I found that as I started doing this tour photography about 10 years ago, uh, the hardest guys to win over are the guys under the stage, the guitar techs and all the production people that are running around under there because it's the same thing with them. That's their world. Right. Oh, and yeah. for a photographer to come in there and disrupt that right. and be in the way, that's you know 90% of the job is learning how to negotiate that and how to... You know, work my way in, and that. And once I got to that point with Bon Jovi, where the guitar techs were like, "Oh no, no, go, go ahead, go ahead," I was like, "That's a big that's deal." Awesome. Do they have yeah. to see have the same? Good, they travel the whole team oh, yeah. all travels the whole together. Team. It's all the so same. So that's good. Once you have your exactly, it's not a reinvention. It's almost like, they, really it's almost while, like they build their house everywhere they go. It's exactly. What it now is. it's their house. Sure. And don't come in my house. Yeah. You know, I'm not yeah. in some concert pavilion. I'm yeah. in my house. And each band yeah. is kind of a family, whether it's literally a family or you know they travel with the same people. You live with these guys, you know, over years. That Bon Jovi's people, most of them have been with him since the beginning. Decades. Very long time. Yeah. Final these, picture. This is a great show. Wait, shot. before we jump. Okay. Those, the before prints that you gave me and that were showing. Are they for sale? They're for sale. Yes, Where they're can not we find those them? specific ones. Those you can those are special. Those are, but yes, tourphotographer.com, all my Bon Jovi stuff. I am their tour photographer. You go to tourphotographer.com and you can see all the shows that I covered. Every one of them is listed there and there are anywhere from 15 to 30 or so pictures from every show and you can get... Five by seven, all the way up to twenty by thirty. And, and I want to credit you for making the pricing accessible to everyone. You know, I, I when I started it, I had a decision to make. Did I want to make it, you know, sort of elitist, like thousand dollar prints and sell maybe one or two of them, or I figured I would just open it up. And so we sell five by sevens for nine ninety nine. Yeah. Wow. Which. You know, I mean, hopefully, I'll if you're at a, a concert and it's them, like but... your favorite band, I mean, that's something yeah. I would want. And I have, there are amazing Bon Jovi fans out there who have literally bought hundreds of photos. Yeah, I'm so sure. thank you, Bon Jovi fans. That's a really good deal. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And and it's a real print that you can hang on your wall. It's got the date on it, so you remember where it was, when it was, and hopefully in twenty, thirty years, you'll uh, you'll still remember that, that day. Really that was neat. in, um, oh gosh, where was that? That was in uh, Belgium. Bruges, and the yeah. sun was setting, and it was yeah. gorgeous. And I worked that angle for about an hour because oh, as yeah. the sun was going down, yeah, you knew. I, I just stayed right Staying. there. I camped out in that yeah, one spot for a long time. Be... So one more picture, as I said. Yeah, so this, I love this because it just talks a little bit about the power of photography. This is a kid named Joshua that I was lucky enough to be involved with a thing called the Heart Gallery about, gosh, it was about five, six years ago now. And this was in New Jersey, and they asked 100 photographers to make portraits of kids who were in the adoption system in New Jersey. And I didn't know this, but I guess when you go to adopt a kid, they have a book. And it's like mug shots of these kids. It's literally horrible Polaroids. I'm sure they're horrible digital pictures now. And kids just don't – they age out of the system. They never get adopted. So 
Let's somebody put some had, sell into these pictures. Exactly. So somebody had an amazing oh, idea so great. to ask 100 photographers. They've done this now in other states it's to make portraits idea. of these kids. Oh. And they came to me and they came to a bunch of others. And they said, and I said, well, do you want like sad kid adopt me pictures? No, no, no. You do your thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, I was concerned. Puppy dog. That's the thing. I don't the do that. Kind of, yeah, exactly. I wouldn't want to do that either. So they said, no, just do your thing. You're a sports guy, whatever it is, do whatever you want to do. So I took these kids and I, I, that particular day I shot three different kids and I said, hey, you guys want, you know, I was in a foster home. And I said, hey, you guys like to jump on your bed i was like can they jump on the bed yeah, yeah, yeah no problem. just go for it and i made these portraits of these kids and then this guy this kid joshua about two years later i got an email from somebody I just got chills. i'm gonna cry just wait I just got it gets chills. better i got an email from somebody and she wrote me and she said oh that kid joshua that you photographed can i get a print of that picture and i was like well yeah but you know why and she said i just adopted him he's coming home for the first time next oh week God. and i want to have the picture over his bed Aww. when he gets home and I cried. I mean, it was like that. To me, it was a picture that I made. It took me an hour of, out of my time. And just the, the power of a, of a photo to literally change this kid's life and, and this woman's life mm -hmm. and to bring them together in a way. And, and it obviously wasn't just me. There were 100 photographers who did amazing he work. You said you can't change the world. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. I mean, most of what I do is superficial stuff. It's fun. It's concerts. It's sports. And I love it. But this was one of the few times where I really made a, an impact on somebody's yeah. life. And so that email, I kept that email, and, and it, I'll ne I never forget the power of, a, of an image. So DavidBergman.net. You can find it all there. David, it's such a pleasure to meet it's you. It's great being here. Wow. Thanks, Lee. So inspiring and exciting at yeah. the same time. And thank you for the print. Thank you. If you want to follow him, we have David Bergman on Twitter, David Bergman and tour photographer. Yes, uh, I'm on Twitter, tour photo okay. on Twitter, and David Bergman on Twitter and then of course Facebook, Facebook. David Bergman photo. And your blog. Plus, and your blog. Plus. And you, Plus. Plus. you know, I have a Google Plus account. I haven't been back. I tried but to I gotta, him. He told me she's going to get busy. me into the into one of the uh, one of the groups there. Yeah. What you just me about my blog? Oh, I was saying, and you, it's good how you tell stories on your blog. Your blog. I do. Great. I try not to just put a picture out there because it's a picture. I try to tell the story, story behind yeah. it if I can. Which reminds yeah. me of Darren Heath, how he does his blog. Very, it's very cool to That's read. all davidbergman.net. Yeah. I didn't it's, get the dot .com. I know. We were had a discussion. Yes. We both I'm lost I'm so happy out. to see that you have a dot but, .net also. But he's better off because at least his David is not... David Bergman, if you're watching, there's another David Bergman. He's a realtor in San Francisco. But he's a realtor. He's not a photographer. He's not a photographer. He forwards me emails. Mine's a photographer. If they go to him by accident, to the dot .com, they, he forwards them to me. So thank yeah. you, David, for doing that. Yeah. It's so, always weird when I get an email from David Bergman. I'm like... That's, that's, that's bizarre. Me. That's yeah. me. That's but exactly. speaking of Hangouts, um, we, I did the Hangout with Trey last night. Oh, that was Richie Zambora. Uh, I was Which trying to figure out who that... This is Richie Zambora. Yeah, that's John and Richie. I was trying to figure Istanbul. out who that was. I thought yeah. it was familiar. That was oh, the hotel in Istanbul. Nice little place, huh? Nice, huh? And then that day we took, we took a boat to a helicopter to the show. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. So, I'm sorry. You did a, a, a hangout with Trey last night. Yeah, it was so much fun. On the Trey fun. Variety Hour. Yes, it was so much fun. It's going to be a great it's show. It's going to be a really, really good show. show. Yeah. It's going to be... I'm so excited to have it. So on. that's our newest podcast. It's a photography yeah. podcast. And it's downloadable now? Yep. Well, it will be soon if it's yeah. not already. I mean, but you're actually... Because last the first week trial and now we're able to download we're going to make both of those downloadable because the first week, okay. 25 minutes with sergey brin the founder of google yeah uh and then you last night it's, yeah. it's a great show if you like trey we all everybody loves trey yeah uh trey's variety hour it's our uh newest show on uh, twit and uh, seven o'clock on mondays that's when it's live last last night we had the subject of horror stories oh fun it was fun we got he's a good he's a good moderator yeah he, he, yeah he mixes it up you know yeah it's so very it, was, it was a good time so uh, when you get on Google Plus, we'll have to get you onto the invite me to a hangout. Thank hangout. you, David. Yeah. DavidBergman.net. Thank you so much for being Thank here. Thank you, Leo. We do Thank this show guys. every uh, Tuesday at about one thirty Pacific, four thirty Eastern, on uh, Twit.tv. Watch live, but you can always download. And there are now dozens of great shows with the best photographers in the world for you to go through and pour through and spend some time with. Somebody suggested, I love this idea, we should make a book of all the photographers we've had on the show. I think that'd be awesome. There's so many great ones. Who's next? Well, guess what we have next. What's next? The guest quest. The winner. Finally. Yeah. So uh, we did a little quest for amongst our, our viewers to find uh, the best photographer out there. And you had some of our, you know, Zach and, uh, and many of our great... Tamara and Colby. Uh, photographers Frank, as judges. Yeah. And you picked somebody, and we're going to have him on next week. Yeah, so we had uh, for an emerging photographer that's I not saw the show yet. where you announced that he, his stuff's great. I know, isn't really it beautiful? Good. I hate that he's so young. I know, he's, and he's <laughs> not They're even a coming photo up major. after I us, know, David. He's like, like you. Yeah. But he's so he's going to be on, and then we're going to have two of the guests, the, two of the judges on oh, to cool. talk about his portfolio and give tips on you know 
what was good, so, what could be improved, and also how to enter competitions. So Robbie Cavanaugh so, will be our uh, our guest. Is this his image? Or is um, this no, image? it's the this top one this. right there. He will be our guest. He yeah. is amazing. I know. Wow. I know. I know. You look at that and you go, oh boy. He's like oh, twenty. But I think 20, those are. I think that's him right too. I think they're mostly self portraits. Really. Yeah, a, lot of, yeah. a lot of young starting out photographers do that. They can't afford yeah. a model. So they, they just make, shoot they take pictures yeah. themselves. We also live in a world now we, where yeah. we put pictures of ourselves normal. online all the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's so. weird. <laughs> all right. It's well, weird for people who are like I visible all the time. In college, Isn't that weird? It's weird. But mine didn't really look like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thank you, David. Thank you all for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Twit Photo.